Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about the new Peppermint OS release. It is finally back. It has taken a couple years, I think, um, since the uh, sad and sudden passing of Mark Greaves, who uh, was the old project team lead. The team behind it took some time out to figure out their direction. They have changed a lot of things around and they have finally released the new version of Peppermint. We're going to have a look at this. Now this is, instead of being based on Ubuntu utilizing heavily from Linux Mint, it is now based on Debian and utilizes its own developed tools, which is actually a really interesting approach. Now, this does mean that it's not going to be quite as user-friendly uh, to the point that I'll reserve my final thoughts actually for the end. Uh, but we go through and download it and install it, and uh, rather than being installed with the standard Ubuntu installer, it's now installed by Calamaris. You get in there, get the guy installed, and then, um, and that was perfectly flawless, worked well. You have the ability to encrypt your disk or not encrypt your disk on install. And one of the great features of it is how minimal it is. This has become one of the smallest to download distribution. So if you're on a limited bandwidth, 1.4 gigabyte download. And what I thought was actually a really, really cool feature is this does not have a default web browser. There is no web browser installed. Instead, you have a dialog box when you uh, when you first boot the system up. It says, "Hey, install a web browser." Then you have a whole lot of them to choose from in your list. We'll get more into that in a bit. But this is based on Debian Bullseye XFCE 416. Here's a listing of the new features from their website. Um, they do have a new Welcome to Peppermint application window. This allows you to install your web browser, install Peppermint Extras, which is an extra wallpaper themes, um, extra uh, and extra desktop themes, a few other options. We have a tutorial on how to use the ICE applications. And we have some system changes in Pep Hub, and we have some release notes. Peppermint Hub, this is just, it's nothing major. Peppermint Hub just contains three tabs. Most of it is, is simply the same adjustments that you get inside of your settings panel. So your XFCE settings panel, the downside of that settings panel is how big and um, just how much stuff is in it. And that is really, I think, why they went ahead and did the Peppermint Hub, because it narrows things down, makes it easier to look for the different things. We have uh, user and tweaks, which, again, all these are inside of the settings. You use users and groups, accessibility, the full settings panel, the appearance, the panel, notification, the default applications. We have network and hardware, which is what you can imagine. And the only different one is the system and software. Again, we'll get into that one in a moment. They have the H block uh, can be enabled or disabled at any time. But you know what? As I was looking through it, uh, I was trying to look through everything that was Peppermint specific. I did not see where to add or remove that um, that ad blocker. Whereas it was really easy to find before. Maybe I just missed it, but it wasn't uh, quite as easy to see. As far as everything else, it's pretty much what you would expect. They uh, ran through the installation on VirtualBox. It worked just fine. And it only took about, I'd say, maybe five or so minutes to install. It's such a little time. I was thinking about making lunch while installed. I didn't have time. It was very quick. Once you uh, hit go on the thing, I think the thing was installed. It looks like scrubbing through my video. Yeah, it was installed in about five minutes time. Low amount of disk space being used and based on Debian with very minimal system uh, services set up and XFCE, this makes it a very ideal solution for in the event that you would like to uh, have something that's small, low-end tablet. So I could see myself, if I were to have problems with MX Linux, I could see myself putting Peppermint back on my writing computer again, which is a Lenovo S21e, so you can look up the statistics for there. Now, the installer works well, easy to use. It's very minimal. We already talked about those. It did drop the Mint updater, which was very good and easy and user-friendly, and they replaced it with a terminal base. When you click it, it's going to open up a terminal box, ask for your password, and then it simply runs the sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade 
uh, in that terminal window. That is something that is going to be a little bit more intimidating for newer users, but I assure you it's just fine. But because everything's running on little terminal windows and everything in the system does. Your Peppermint Extras, download wallpapers, you have to click the connect button and then it opens up terminal and then it downloads everything through the terminal and you see that. So it doesn't look like a super user friendly or even a super polished distro in that respect but it does seem to work well. My only issue with it is that I'm on a slow internet connection. I didn't realize how slow my internet connection was, so it took a long time to download some of the things that I simply wanted to download. Now, let's go and talk about this uh, Welcome to Peppermint screen with the Install Your Web Browser. When you pull this up, you have a variety of web browsers to choose from. Here is the list, Firefox, Conqueror, Gnome Web, Falcon, Tor Browser, Midori, uh, Cute Browser, uh, Lua Kit, I've not seen that before, and Chromium. So those are the ones that are uh, in there, and these are all from the Debian repository. So Firefox is really Firefox ESR, because that's what distributes with uh, with Debian. Now, there are some extra software packages you can install in here as well. It is certainly not all-inclusive. We have a Trilly, uh, which is a uh, document viewer. We have Transmission. Uh, they have um, a Rand R, uh, which is another uh, basically a, a display GUI that's already installed. Deconfederator is already installed. They have P mount, um, JPEG view, uh, GPIC view, JPEG view. Wow, okay, <laughs> GPIC view uh, for image viewers. They have Parole uh, in case you need to talk to your officer or play some music. Uh, just don't play pirated music while you're talking to your parole officer. Just a thought. Anyway, uh, we have Mate Calculator. And then the next ones we have, we have YouTube DL in there. And then we have Snap Package Platform, Flatpak, and GNOME Software Store uh, Package Platforms. Okay, so let's talk about these for a moment. Uh, there is no Snap or Flatpak by default. Okay, and that is good because it gives the user the choice. It's not pushing either of these on you. So you can click in there and add the support. The problem is, is uh, I didn't test Snap. I assume the Snap is going to work fine. But the Flatpak support simply adds the terminal-based system, so you're going to have to manage the Flatpaks in there. Even installing the Flatpak and clicking on inside that um, the Pep Hub, which has inside that Software and Downloads tab, I said we talked about it a little bit. One of those is a link to Flatpak, which takes you to the Flatpak web page. You click on something, hit the download, and then it will try and open it in a text editor and doesn't know what to do with the file. So you still have to manually manage those. Now, there is the GNOME software store, which of course works with Snaps and Flatpaks. Unfortunately, when you install the GNOME software store, it does not set up the Flatpak plugins, and it does not even seem to connect to the repositories. So I was not actually able to install software. So I'm like, well, let's go ahead and manually install the Flatpak GNOME store software connector. I went ahead and manually installed that by searching for it because I couldn't remember the exact name of it. Go in there, manually install it. That fixed the repositories, but it still wasn't able to do anything with Flatpak. The only advantage is clicking on the Flatpak website did seem to allow the GNOME software store to install it. I canceled it before it installed because that's about a gigabyte of download. I'm on very limited um, meter here, so I went ahead and canceled it, but it did, did appear it was going to work. But connecting that somehow refixed the Debian repositories and the GNOME software store, but it never put the Flatpak repositories in. I don't know. So there definitely needs to be a lot more polish on Peppermint to go back in here and fix a lot of these little issues before you'd say, hey, this is really great for new users. So technically, on a technical level, the Flatpak support will work if you know how to manage Flatpaks by the terminal, but it... Ugh. It is not a user-friendly approach. Um, as we already talked about, pretty much everything you do gives you terminal pop-ups and runs codes through there. Um, and then let's go ahead and have a brief look at that, that hub there. So the system and software hub gives us the uh, Peppermint, um, it's the Peppermint hub. System information, which is useful if you need to know what type of stuff you're running. The update manager, which you click on that, it just opens up that terminal, runs sudo apt, update sudo apt, upgrade. Uh, so it just opens up terminal, asks for your password, and then runs through the upgrade. Uh, I 
don't know if it gives you any notifications. It was already up to date when I installed it. Now we have a Snap Store, a Flat Hub, and an App Image Hub there. Those will take you to their respective web pages. They don't seem to change if you install those frameworks. The GNOME Store originally takes you to the web page, but if you have the GNOME Store installed on your computer, it will open up the GNOME Store, but again, I was having a lot of issues with the GNOME Store. So Flatpak um, never seemed to work well. So I don't know, there were a lot of little bugs, a lot of little issues that I encountered. Classically, Peppermint was always one of the distros that I highly recommended. At this point in time, if you're a new user, I'm gonna probably recommend you give Peppermint OS a pass for now uh, for these reasons. The first is, it is not as user-friendly as it used to be. We've lost the GUI applications, which made system management easier. The constant pop-up boxes can be um, a little intimidating for some users, especially since they don't all disappear when it's done with its process. So you have to manually close stuff. For example, when I installed the desktop wallpapers, in the process of just installing desktop wallpapers, we got three separate pop-ups that needed to be interacted with. One was a terminal link, which I think that one did disappear, if I remember correctly, when it was done. But we also had a test connector, which it was unclear to me exactly what you did with that. I made a guess and it ended up working. But by the time I was done in simply installing the Peppermint wallpapers, there were all of these windows that were open that I had to manually close. And so you had a lot of those types of things which made it not as user friendly and certainly not as polished. So Peppermint actually went backwards as far as their user um, uh, usability and as far as uh, how the, the system is managed and updated. Additionally, since the GNOME software store, simply installing it through the original software application does not seem to fix the repos, and I did attempt to restart the computer first, and going into the GNOME software store and clicking the view repos section doesn't seem to work. So I couldn't check, verify, fix, edit, update, or anything there. I'd have to do it all through the terminal. Basically, I had serious problems being able to install extra software, whether that is Flatpak, which this advertises it works well with. If you can do it on the terminal, I guess it will, but you can't seem to do it with a GUI. Uh, I didn't test the Snap Store. Hopefully, the Snap Store will just be the Snap Store and that will work. That's the advantage of Snaps, I guess. Uh, but even the GNOME Store gave me a lot of issues. There is, of course, Synaptic Package Manager on this still. So you have that as an option. But a lot of people don't know how to use it or don't want to know how to use it if we're talking about a new Linux user. So for these reasons, I do like Peppermint. Its major advantages is, is how low weight it is, how just every option is presented to you so you're not getting a full highly bloated system with massive amounts of applications that you will never use it's very lightweight it's an easy small download it installs very quickly and then gives you the options to expand it later the problem is many of those expansions don't seem to work and they seem to work in ways that will intimidate some newer users for these reasons i would not recommend peppermint as a new distribution if you are a new user User. I would not recommend doing that, uh, but if you are looking to move on, looking to learn a little bit more, or moving into a lighter weight distro, which gives you a lot more control, it is good for that. The future for the Peppermint team, see if you can figure out what's wrong with the GNOME software store and why even installing the Flatpak hub, I'm not able to actually still access Flatpaks inside the GNOME store. That would be a, a good function. Um, the app image inclusion, Snap Store inclusion is good. I did not test the Snap Store in this particular case. Um, I'll leave that to some of the other reviewers. But overall, it's a good distribution. I still would probably run this on my system because it is so lightweight and I think it would work really well. And the style is still beautiful. It is a great distribution. I just think they've gone backwards in the usability of it uh, for the new user perspective. So those are my thoughts on Peppermint. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. 
please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.